Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. It is a very windy, blustery day. You might even in fact see some snowflakes today. Um, <clears throat> the cold front passed through. It was a big, big, big storm. And I just wanted to give you guys a update on what's going on in the garden. Sort of a garden tour, but mainly on the trees, the, the fruit trees. Um, this is not even an orchard. We just have three of them, but um, they are really new. The oldest ones are those two. Last year, this one's this year. So this is a Bartlett pear. And you can see it has many buds, and I think it would produce, sorry, it would it would produce fruit this year. But the thing is, it's a pear, and most need a cross-pollinator. This one is semi-pollinating, so it could produce a couple of fruits, but it's going to be much more abundant with another pear. So I'm not expecting much. I'm just, you know, expecting for this to grow a lot this year. But these branches, look at this. This is, they're so flimsy. I'm literally putting no effort on this. They, this could not even support one tiny fruit. They need to thicken and really uh, develop into one of these uh, thicker branches. But I'm looking forward to a year of growth on this tree. In terms of our apple tree, we could see that it's it's doing nicely. I, mean, I don't think I've ever even shown it on this channel before. But this is a gala apple tree. And another thing, it's semi-pollinating. So yes, it would produce a couple of fruits, um, depending on the tree size. But as you can see right here, um, right here, sorry, uh, right here there is one graft, two graft, three graft, four graft, five graft, six graft up there. So I grafted this tree, I grafted a red delicious on this apple. And the reason is a red delicious and a gala, or gala, whatever you want to pronounce it as, uh, do it, uh, do their cross-pollination very well. So if this one flowers, if any of these grafts take, I just need one. That would be enough, you know, and that would be a, you know, I'd have a red, I would, I would technically have two varieties of apples on one tree, and that would allow me to have cross-pollination without having two trees taking up twice as much space, because this yard is a residential yard. We don't have that much space here for fruit trees. Uh, this is a peach tree, and uh, this peach tree is, is probably the best out of all of these, and the reason for that is because it doesn't need a cross pollinator, so it could you know pollinate itself and produce loads of fruit. However, last year I did a mistake with this. I tried uh, separating these two a little bit more for a wider crotch angle, and it kind of a little bit got a little bit injured. Tiny crack developed, so I just really bundled it up. I wanted to seal it up during the winter time, and I will keep that bundled up for the next couple of years to make ensure this will seal. There's a plane flying over, hopefully you could bear with that, but um, I'm, uh, last year we actually did, got nothing out of these trees. Well, these two trees. That one wasn't even there. And this one produced a fruit. It did flower, actually, several flowers. It was very poor pollinating conditions. We got rain, we got wind, and there was actually a little bit of snow during the flowers opened, when the flowers opened. And that, that led to almost zero pollination. And I mean, I say almost because one did pollinate, one tiny, you know, one tiny peach did, and it grew nicely. I was looking forward to it because it was a really nice peach tree looking, you know, I mean, really nice peach fruit. But then one day it was very windy, a thunderstorm came by, that fell off, and before I got a chance to get it, a squirrel took it away. So that's okay, I wasn't expecting much. That allowed it to grow more, but this year it has a lot of buds on here this is you know, this is a phone so basically i don't know if you'll be able to see this you can see that that's that that's a that's a bud that's a fruiting bud and these um uh, these peaches only fruit on one year old buds only only on last year's growth this was two years ago you could see no buds that was first last year's you could see buds so very interested to see what's going to happen but i still have one more thing to show you guys so yes, a little uh, change of settings we are in a little hoop house that i built constructed a few years back and it does its service, it does it very well when the sun is shining, but when there's no sun, it's basically no difference from the outdoors. So it's still bone chilling in here. And we see a fruit, another fruit tree. This one's very special to me as I grew this from seed. So I nurtured it from an apple seed all the way into this. It was much taller, it was about that tall. I cut it down and again, I grafted on another red delicious graft. So if all those grafts over there fail, we could have another red delicious apple tree. This one would be all red delicious. And then I guess, you know, uh, if this one, assuming this one takes, we'd have two apple trees, which would also be fine, but a little bit more of a space hog. I did leave a couple of branches on here, just in case that fails, it could grow and could produce possibly uh, more branches so I could propagate it next year. Cause I really, really hate to lose this tree. This tree is a beautiful tree. It was growing so fast. It was a shame to cut it down, but it's better because you know, apple trees grown from seed, 
we don't have space to test out uh, what would happen because a lot, you know, a lot of the fruit trees don't even produce edible ap apples or they don't even produce apples grown from seed. So I wasn't really willing to find that out. So I just decided to prop graft it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.